Uh, my name is Sarah Bolton. I'm a journalist here in Memphis and a dancer with Project Motion. And today I'm going to be talking about um, a topic that's very personal to me, um, but it's, I think, very important for the city of Memphis as well. And it has to do with artists and real estate and artists and gentrification. Um, for the past two years, I've been working on a documentary film project called Children of the Wall with filmmaker Eric Swartz. It's about artists um, in Berlin. But when we got there and started interviewing people, we realized it was more about um, artists and gentrification and artists who moved into the space that was left behind when the Berlin Wall fell in 1989. They moved into the space that was left behind here, as you can see, and also into the empty buildings that were left behind in East Berlin. Um, one place that's a great example is this art house, Tocolis. It's a, this amazing, vibrant, energetic place full of artists from all over the world who are making art and having exhibitions. Um, it's just this incredible place. The really sad thing is that after April of this year, Tocolis might not exist anymore because developers are going to kick the artists out and turn it into um, shopping malls and boutiques. Um, which there's nothing wrong with shopping malls, but it's 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 a shame because it's a wonderful um, it's a wonderful thing for the city of Berlin. In fact, this has happened just recently. There was another building in Berlin that was evicted. This was just two weeks ago. 2,500 police to clear out 25 tenants. So it's a very real thing happening right now in the city. Um, and so what are we talking about? This issue of gentrification. Basically, it's where older neighborhoods that are maybe in disrepair are being taken over and turned into newer, um, basically for the yuppie class. Which there's nothing wrong with that group of people, but when you're kicking artists out, it's a problem. We, this is not just happening in Berlin, it happens all over the world. New York City, it's happening right here in Memphis in areas like downtown and the um, South Main District, and even Broad Street is kind of the beginnings of that. It's happening to individuals, people um, like Ellis Chapel. He is a visual artist who owned the Young and Moral Building um, about 11 years ago, and the city asserted an eminent domain and kicked him out because, ironically enough, they wanted to uh, put the Civil Rights Museum in, which is great, nothing against the Civil Rights Museum, but they just kicked him out of the studio space that he spent eight years developing. Another artist, um, another photographer here in Memphis is Philip Parker, he owned this space on South Main. He put over $150,000 into the building to, to make it better and renovate it. Um, when the city of Memphis started to raise his property tax to more than $500 a month, he could not live here anymore because he was not about making a profit. He was a working artist. Um, that space is now Spendini, which is a great, fabulous restaurant. I'm nothing against good restaurants, good food. But it's unfortunate that we had to kick an artist out of um, the South Main area in order to put in a restaurant. So I had the opportunity to speak to these gentlemen recently, and they have some very strong statements to say about Memphis, which I think they have the right to say, and I think um, is not every artist's experience in the city, but it's definitely an issue that we need to um, discuss. It's a complicated issue, there's no easy answer. I'm not here tonight to say, here's the solution. I don't know what that is, but I have a lot of questions, and I think questions can start a discussion, which can lead, excuse me, lead to a solution. So these are my questions. How do we value and nurture our artists, and how do we create spaces that are affordable so they will want to stay in Memphis? How do we create opportunities for the arts to be a source of revenue for the city? And I have five suggestions for things that we could change. First of all, artists need to become their own advocates. They need to become educated. They need to know their rights. They need to be educated about this issue and the role they play in gentrification. Our city leaders need to create opportunities for artists to buy property, to stay in those properties, and they need to consider the long-term cultural and economic gains rather than just short-term profit. Making a profit is not a bad thing, but if it's at the expense of people and their lives and their livelihoods, it's an issue. Um, we need numbers. Numbers are important. People like numbers. Arts Memphis is doing two different surveys this year that look at the economic impact of, of arts in Memphis, which is great, but I think we need to look at the individual impact of individual artists as well. Um, we need responsibility and accountability. There's an organization called Policy Link that has this great um, concept called equitable development, which basically means making the people who are in the communities being uh, gentrified, making them a part of the discussion. 
And finally, I think we need to follow the examples of other cities. Paducah, Kentucky is a great example. Um, but it's time for Memphians to take action right here in Memphis. Um, and I believe we can do it. If you have any other questions about um, the documentary project, you can go to our website. It's uh, childrenofthewall.com. You can also find us on Facebook. Um, thank you very much for your time.